Hello again and welcome along. This is the second video. Uh, in the first video, I introduced you to Lady, the young English setter. She's just approaching four months. And um, I've had a great response to the first video. A lot of people interested to know how I'm going to proceed and train the dog. So, uh, in this video, I plan to discuss my plan for the pup and my way of training the pup for the type of shooting that I do. Now, the way I train the dog is specific to my requirements and other people may have other ideas and other requirements entirely and they would train the dog to their respective requirements. Um, I would be training this dog as I desire and try to get from her what I want. So it's important to understand from the beginning that my method may not suit everybody or the particular way that I train the dog, the particular conditions that I train the dog in and my techniques etc. These are techniques that I have learned over the years through my own experience for the most part and that's the way I will proceed. So. It's important to understand from the beginning that this is my way and um, there are many other people with many other ways that might suit you better if you're planning to train um, a setter. So my requirements of the pup when she reaches the, the age where I'd be actually taking her hunting would be for her to hunt and find a game. To hold that game until such time as I am within gunshot range to then produce that game on command and then to retrieve the game. Now retrieving is a complete, a complete if you like, um, area of its own in terms of setters. Some setters will naturally retrieve. Some setters can be trained to retrieve. And some setters will never retrieve at all. That's my experience. Now, I'm lucky insofar as Lady, even though she's only three and a half months, from the very first day I got her, I got her to, re to retrieve. And how I did that was, I used this pheasant swing. And basically, I teased her with it, threw it, and she carried it away. Now, that's not a retrieve in the pure sense of retrieving, but nonetheless, she lifted it and carried it and I knew then at that point that I could work on that and actually get her to retrieve. Now I haven't actually achieved that to date but I will be working on it in future videos. So retrieving, um, if you're lucky enough to have a setter that retrieves naturally that's fine or if you've, if you've trained your setter to retrieve that's also fine but like I said in my experience there are some setters that will never retrieve. My first setter that I ever had as a garden setter. Um, he would not retrieve under any circumstance. I then had an Irish setter who would retrieve from water and wouldn't retrieve off land. And I had more setters and pointers after that, none of whom would retrieve at all in any circumstance. So what I would say to you is, is if you're planning to get yourself a setter or a pointer and you're looking at a litter of pups the ideal thing to do, if you have the opportunity, is to take each pup individually into a garden or an area and have something like a pheasant's tail, tease the pup and throw it. And I would then choose the pup from that litter, assuming any of them would lift and carry the pheasant's wing. That's how I would choose a pup from a litter. Because at that point you know that the dog will carry. And it's only a matter of a bit of work then to get them to actually retrieve. The pup that runs out, sniffs it and leaves it there, well, unless you really fancy that pup, fine. But if you want a pup that's possibly going to retrieve in the future, I would suggest that you try that method and um, you'll have a possibility of a retrieving dog as well as a hunting, pointing dog. Um, but anyway, before all that and the actual training aspect of, you need to have, if you're planning on getting a set of pup, or a pointer pup for that matter, or any gun dog, you need to get the right stuff. By that I mean you need to get 
dogs from the right background, the hunting background. Now, I source lady from some people who have English setters and they've had them for many generations and they're purely a hunting breed. Unfortunately, like all, we call them nice looking dogs, setters have been bred over gener many generations for show. Show breeds of gun dogs are absolutely useless for hunting. They will never do what's required of a gun dog. You need to get, you need to source your pup from the right background, a hunting background. Now, for to get that pup, you're going to have to have the right contacts. You're going to have to know people who have setters already, or you're going to have to know somebody who knows people who have the right setters. I would strongly advise against buying a setter pup, or a pointer pup for that matter, from any source that you're not sure of. Because you likely end up with a dog that won't perform as you would like in the hunting field. So when you get when you first get your pup like I did with Lady, Lady was um, 10 weeks old when I got her now, she's now 14 weeks, so I've had her approximately four weeks. And the first thing I do with a pup, and I did the same with Lady, was I spent some time with her every day, as much time as I possibly could. I try and do at least two or three sessions a day if I could, just to spend some time with her, play around with her and try to bond with her. That's very important. And I know not everybody has the time to do that, but spend as much time as you possibly can with the dog in order to form a bond. At that age of their lives, they're going to want to be with you all the time. And it's important that you encourage that because that will be important later on in training, the desire to be with you. Because at some point in the future, their desire to hunt will overcome their desire to be with you. And in that way, you can develop problems. But I'll come to that in a, a later video. As well as that, what I did with her was I brought her out into fields. And just let her run around and do whatever she wanted. No training involved, just letting her do whatever she wanted. And I brought her to where I thought she might find some scent just to see her response and see her reaction. And as I suspected, because of her background, she immediately responded to any scent that she came across. She got busy straight away and you could see the hunting instinct coming out. Um, another thing, I suppose it's the very, very start of her training, if you like. The very fir first thing I did in terms of her training was I introduced her to the whistle. This is the whistle I use. You can use any whistle you like. It makes no real difference. I just use a two ten and a half whistle. And I've been using those for years. And I've seen people use referees whistles. It makes no difference, provided that the dog understands what you want. And basically what I did with her, just to, brief, just to start her training, a very important aspect of any gun dog training is to have the dog return to you when called. Vitally important, particularly as the training advances. You're going to want to exert control over the dog, and this is one of the most important parts of it, that the dog will return to you when called. So how I actually do that is, when the pup goes away from me, I tip the whistle like that and turn and walk away. Her desire to be with me will mean that she'll run after me. And after doing that a few times, she will make the connection between that sound and thinking that I'm leaving her or going away, so she's immediately going to want to be with me. So that's the beginning of the training. The next thing after that, what I'll be doing next in the next video is I will be introducing Lady to gunfire. Now that's a very important day in any gun dog's life and there are many, many techniques and methods for doing that. Um, I have my own way of doing it. That's not to say everybody should do it the same way, but it's worked for me for many years and um, I will be doing that in the next video along with a couple of other things. So that's the plan and that's the outline. One other thing before I um, close down this video is get the dog to walk on the lead. 
this is the best type of lead in my view, just a simple slip lead. Um, dogs will struggle first of all when you put um, a lead on them, some of them will just lie down the ground and won't go along with you. A couple of techniques that I have found very useful to get a dog to walk on a lead if you're having problems. One is to put a collar on the dog for a few days and they get used to the feel of the collar around the neck so then when you attach the lead to it, it's not such a big issue for them. That's one method that works. But the best method of all is to have somebody walk another dog in front of you and you put the pup on the lead and the, dog's, the pup's desire to be with the other dog will for most times overcome its fear or its reluctance to walk on the lead. So there are a couple of little tips and hints and um, I hope that you've found useful. As I say in the next video I'll be doing a little bit of more advanced stuff. Bearing in mind that lady is only just approaching four months I won't be putting any pressure on the dog whatsoever. I'll be just doing simple things that will not impose on her in any way because uh, currently she wouldn't be able for any of that kind of pressure. As time goes on, the training will become more advanced when she's able, when I determine that she's able for the pressure of more advanced training. For the most part now, it's having fun and introducing little things like the recall, the gunfire and a couple of other small bits. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.